when I talk with people about cannabis, they think they know everything about it. Everyone is familiar with the use of cannabis in medicine. And I guess part of you are familiar with the use for other purposes. In the last three years, I'm managing one of the biggest and most advanced laboratory in the world for cannabis research. If there is something I learned in these three years, is that I don't know anything and that we are just starting to scratch the beginning of understanding this complex plant. People are saying cannabis can kill cancer cells. What's the meaning of it? Does it kill all types of cancers? Which cannabis? In my lab alone, I have more than 550 different strains of cannabis. Which one of them affect which types of cancer? The truth, we don't know. Does cannabis can really treat cancer or other diseases? Yes, I assume it can. A good friend of mine, the head of the pen department in one of the biggest hospitals in Israel, told me that when he started to treat with cannabis, one of his first patient was an old lady that suffered from pain, from chronic pain. And nothing else helped her. So he started to treat with cannabis. And after a few weeks, he called her and asked her how she is feeling. Oh, doctor, it's great. It's amazing. It totally changes my life. He was surprised. He said, Oh, really? Does it really eliminate the pain? Oh, no, doctor, for the pain it didn't help. But now my grandson coming to visit me every evening. <laughs> so how cannabis is affecting us so powerfully? On the cannabis flowers, there are cells that produce unique compounds. These compounds are called cannabinoids. And these compounds are unique since our body can produce similar compounds. Actually, in our body, we have a special and important system called the endocannabinoid system. This system regulates, relax, eat, sleep, forget, and protect all these important processes and cannabis compounds affect our body through this machinery. I will give you one example. There is two ways to feel hunger. One is through our stomach and one through our head. When we are not eating for a long time, our stomach shrink and we're feeling hungry. But how many times do we eat even when we are not hungry? We're finishing a huge meal. We cannot breathe. We're totally full. And then come the dessert. <laughs> it is not your blame. It's all the endocannabinoid system, believe me. Using cannabis in medicine, it's not something we, we invent in the last years. Did you know that cannabis is one of the ancient plant human being used as a medicine. The Chinese used it thousands of years ago as a major medicine. The Egyptian used it to treat glaucoma on inflammation. Till 1937, more than 100 illnesses were treated with cannabis. If you will open a medicine book from 1920, and I did it in Portland half a year ago, you will find out that the whole chapter is dealing with cannabis and illnesses. So think about it. It's crazy. For 5,000 years, it was the major medicine for mankind. And in the last eight years, it just disappeared. So how cannabis came back to the medical arena? Sherlock Figge was born 
in 2006 in Colorado. When she was three years old, sorry, when she was three months old, she started to suffer from seizures. She had more than 50 seizures a day. Till she was five years old, she already tried every medicine on earth and nothing helped her. By then, she already lost her ability to walk, talk, and eat. She was about to die. When she started to use cannabis, it totally stopped her seizures. From 50 seizures a day to one or two seizures a week, and then totally eliminated. Charlotte used cannabis with very low amount of THC, the only compound that have psychoactivity activity in, the, in the cannabis. So actually, it didn't make her to, feel, to be high or stoned, but it still eliminated the seizures. Two months ago, a guy came in my lab with a small bottle in his, in his hand and asked for my help. This guy, Daniel, told me that his wife had a small car accident four years ago, and th since then, she started to suffer from seizures. For a whole year, she was in and out the hospital, trying to find a medicine to help her to reduce the seizures. After one year, a friend of Daniel came with an extract that he did from cannabis. And when Daniel's wife started to use it, it stopped totally her seizures. After four months, this extract started to run down. So Daniel came back to his friend to make a new one. Unfortunately, the new one didn't work at all. Daniel's wife used cannabis with low THC and high CBD like Charlotte. But we have hundreds of strains like that. Every one of them contains different combinations of cannabinoids. So actually, it's a different medicine. How can, we how can we repeat the treatment? For two years, Daniel did hundreds of extracts. Until three months ago, bingo. He succeeded to find the one re that reduces his wife's seizures again. When we started in my lab to work with cannabis and to check how it affects cancer, we find out that there is a specificity between the types of the cannabis and its ability to attack cancer cells. Cannabis number one will kill colon cancer, but will do no harm to prostate cancer. But cannabis number two will do no harm to the colon cancer, but will kill the prostate cancer. But what are the differences between cannabis number one to cannabis number two? What are the differences between the cannabis that Daniel's wife is using now to the hundred she tried in the last two years? You will be surprised to learn that nobody in the world can give you this answer. Even though there are over than 100 cannabinoids and a total of over than 500 active compounds in the cannabis, we are, we are able to identify just few of them. Physicians prescribe cannabis all over the world, but on this prescription, there is no specificity to the types of the cannabis, not dosage or where of, where of administration. How can we repeat a success treatment if we don't know what are the compounds, the active compounds that affect the patient? In order to answer part of this question, we developed in my lab a unique method to identify all the active compounds of cannabis. Today, we are not blind anymore. On top of our basic research in cancer, and in a neuro disease, we are, doing, we are running the database project. In this project, today in Israel, every cannabis that a patient can get in Israel, every time that a grower pick a batch or make an extract, it's coming through my lab first, and we're doing full identification. On the other hand, we are following up on the patient, 
and trying to understand which type of cannabis affect which types of, of disease. The idea is to merge these two arms and to say in these 30 strains, these 30 strains elevate appetite in 80% of the patient. What are the common compounds in these strains that are not existing in the strains that not elevate appetite? And to this, to take to animal model and clinical trial to make it evidence-based. Two years ago, we started to treat autistic kids, very severe autistic kids, in Israel with cannabis. These kids, most of them didn't communicate at all. Most of them not even in eye contact. These kids are very violent for themselves and their surroundings. Sometimes walking with their hand tied. Sometimes walking with a helmet on the head because they can knock the head to the wall until they are fainting. These kids getting cannabis with very low amount of THC, they're only psychoactive compounds, so they are not stoned or high. But still we see a phenomenal result, more than 78% success with these kids on many parameters. The cannabis reduces anxiety in these kids, it reduces the violence, it improves their sleep. Think about a child, 17 years old, that still seven times a night, waking up every night with shouting. And now he's sleeping all night. But even the most incredible thing, it's improved in the communication. A mother called me and told me that her, her son, 19 years old kid, was hospitalized for four years because he was very violent. But two months, just two months after he started to get cannabis, he was released home because there was nothing to do with him in the hospital anymore. When he came home, it was an evening. So he, his mother asked him what he wants for dinner. And for the first time, the first time in his life, he looked in her eyes and said, an egg. This mother told me, Daddy, you don't understand. It's not that my child is a normal now. He didn't ask a scrambled egg with onion. But when, from the moment he was born, I'm reading stories to these kids. I'm talking with him. I'm asking questions. He knows what it is an egg. He knows what he wants to eat. I didn't waste all my life. These things change this family's life. Two months ago, the companies that supply the extract, the cannabis extract to these families had a problem with the crop. It's a plant. It didn't grow well. So they had to create, to produce an extract with similar strain. Again, high CBD, low THC ratio 20 to 1, so similar that this company thought that they can say that it's actually as the original one. But after a few days, the dream crashed. These kids become violent again. One kid went through, went through the window when the window was closed and cut his body all over. One kid jumped on his mother, 17 years old kid, jumped on his mother and beat her in a way that she had to, to, to get medical care. A father called me less than two weeks ago and told me that his son had such a burst of violence that in order to control him, by accident, he broke his both hands. Since we have in our database exactly what these kids got before, we were able immediately to identify the changes between the original strain to the strain they are getting now and to direct them to a different company that has similar cannabis to the original one. For the first time, we were able to help these kids to get the right treatment. For the first time, we are able to help Daniel's wife to understand what she's getting and to repeat the success treatment. I am a scientist. I have a laboratory for cancer research in the Technion, the Technology Institute of Israel. I'm not a big fan of cannabis. 
And if it was a spinach and fetunia, it was better for me. It was much easier. But it is cannabis. And what I did learn in the last three years, that this plant has an enormous potential to treat many illnesses. Whether we like it or not, it is here. And it's not going. We cannot take it away anymore from the kids that have 200 seizures a day and now they are seizure free. We cannot take it away anymore from the autistic kids that it changed their life and their family's life. We cannot take it away anymore from the PTSD patient that for years didn't sleep a whole night and now we can come back to normal life. We need to understand that cannabis won't go anywhere. It's give hope to many people today. It should be another option in the toolbox of the physician to treat the patient. It is our responsibility to learn how to use it better and how to precise it. It's our responsibility to take it to the next level. We, the scientists, the physician, the community, owe it to our patients. Thank you very much.